Let me ask you something weird. The last time you fried chicken or made fries, did you look at the leftover oil and think, could I pour this in my gas tank? No, just me? Well, believe it or not, some people have tried exactly that. And in a world dealing with rising fuel prices, climate anxiety, and a growing curiosity for DIY solutions, the question pops up more than you'd think. Can you really run a car on cooking oil? Let's dive in right here on History of Simple Things. All right, before we get into the details, here's the quick answer. Yes, you can run a car on cooking oil, but, and this is a big but, it's not as simple as dumping your leftover canola oil into your gas tank and driving off into the sunset. There are technical, legal, and even ethical hurdles involved. So where did this idea come from? Let's rewind a bit. The idea of using vegetable oil as fuel isn't new. In fact, when Rudolf Diesel first introduced his diesel engine in the 1890s, he actually ran it on peanut oil during the 1900 World Exhibition in Paris. He believed farmers could grow their own fuel, making energy more democratic and sustainable. Pretty visionary, right? Unfortunately, once petroleum diesel became cheaper and widely available, vegetable oil was pushed aside. It wasn't until the late 20th century, especially during oil crises and environmental movements, that the idea started gaining traction again. And that's where we get to the real star of this conversation, biodiesel. So, let's clear up a common confusion. When people say they're running their cars on cooking oil, they usually mean one of two things, biodiesel or straight vegetable oil, SVO. Biodiesel is cooking oil that's been chemically processed, usually through a method called transesterification, which removes glycerin and makes the oil more fuel-like. It can be used in most diesel engines with little or no modifications. On the other hand, straight vegetable oil is exactly what it sounds like. Used or fresh cooking oil poured directly into the engine. But here's the catch. Only older diesel engines can handle this. And even then, you need to modify the fuel system. Otherwise, you're just asking for clogged filters, damaged injectors, or worse, a total engine failure. All right, for the gearheads out there, Let's get a bit nerdy. When running on straight vegetable oil, you need a special conversion kit. These usually include a second fuel tank, heating elements to warm the oil because cold veggie oil is too thick, fuel filters and lines resistant to thick, sticky substances, a switch to alternate between diesel and oil. Why the switch? Because when starting or stopping the engine, you typically want to use regular diesel to avoid buildup in the system. Only once the engine is warm do you switch to veggie oil. So yeah, it's not plug and play, but it is possible. Now, if you're thinking of heading to your local fast food joint with a bucket, hoping to score free fuel, you're not alone. In fact, waste vegetable oil or WVO has become a hot commodity. Restaurants used to pay people to haul it away. Now, some sell it to biodiesel companies or even get paid by individuals who convert it into fuel. But you can't just filter out the French fry bits and call it a day. You need to filter the oil thoroughly to remove food particles. Dewater it. Yes, that's a real term. Water can wreck diesel engines. Possibly heat it and test the viscosity to make sure it's usable. So while it sounds scrappy and fun, it's more like running a mini fuel refinery in your garage. Here's the thing. Even if you do everything right technically, you still have to think about the law. In many places, fuel is taxed. So if you're using an alternative fuel source and not reporting it, you might be breaking the law, whether you meant to 
or not. Some U.S. states, for instance, require you to file paperwork and pay a per-gallon fuel tax if you run your car on WVO. In the U.K., there's a limit to how much biodiesel you can use per year without declaring it. So yeah, if you're going to be a fry-fueled renegade, just make sure the government's okay with it. You'd be surprised. There are online communities, forums, and YouTube channels dedicated to this stuff. Some folks have even built entire greasel fleets, vans, trucks, and cars, all running on recycled vegetable oil. These people often live off-grid, are deeply invested in sustainability, or just love sticking it to big oil. There are also commercial companies producing biodiesel at scale used by bus fleets, delivery trucks, and even airlines in experimental blends. So while it's not mainstream, it's definitely happening. Let's be real. If you're watching this video and seriously thinking of giving it a try, here's some advice. Only do it with an older diesel engine. Pre-2006 models are more forgiving. Start with biodiesel, not straight oil. Learn from others. There are tons of guides, books, and forums online. Keep track of your local laws. Test everything. This isn't the place to wing it. It can be incredibly satisfying and even fun, but it's not a just add oil and go solution. Think of it like homebrewing, but for fuel. So, can you really run a car on cooking oil? Yes. But should you? That depends on how much effort, risk, and legal paperwork you're willing to take on. It's a fascinating blend of science, sustainability, and good old-fashioned DIY spirit. And while it won't replace gas stations anytime soon, it's a reminder that innovation doesn't always come from a lab. Sometimes, it comes from your kitchen. At the end of the day, this idea taps into something bigger. Our desire to be more self-sufficient, more environmentally conscious, and maybe even a little rebellious. Whether you're looking to save money, lower your carbon footprint, or just impress your friends with a car that smells like onion rings, the cooking oil car is more than just a gimmick. It's a symbol of what's possible when we start rethinking the way we fuel our world. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.